A very good morning to you all. Welcome back to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. And we are doing good. We are around 32,000 views now and uh, more than 1,500 watch hours, uh, more than 2,100 uh, subscribers. And then, of course, uh, I keep adding to the playlist. So here you are. You have recombinant DNA technology. You have getting started with Python. Uh, you have R for data analytics and R for beginners. Then you have introductory bioinformatics and you have uh, Linux command line. You have tools and techniques in biotechnology. And then you have a, a playlist on next generation sequencing where we talk of the basic sequencing technologies, the advancements that have been made, and also initial steps into NGS data analysis. Then, of course, I have added a new feature that is called Weapons Notes. This is uh, like shots in YouTube, uh, less than one minute revision of key points. And then you also have a quiz part that is known as Weapons Crackets, where you have questions again. And this is again in the format of uh, less than a minute, five questions per quiz. And then, of course, if you get tired and you want to do a bit of recreation, so I have now started shots. So this is part of my photography hobby. And uh, I have put up some photos here. You can have a look at uh, some of these photos here, right? So that is where we are. And today we start with what is known as BLAST or Basic Local Alignment Search Tool. So here we are, and we're going to study uh, BLAST today. But before uh, getting into BLAST, let me give you some bioinformatics basics. So let us start with what is bioinformatics first. So bioinformatics is a subdiscipline of biology and computer science, which is concerned with acquisition, storage, analysis, and dissemination of biological data. So what has happened is in the past 100 years, we have made rapid strides in biology. And in the past 50, 75 years, we've made real rapid strides in biotechnology. And what this has resulted is in generation of a huge amount of data, more so after the genomics era started around 2001. And then, of course, uh, the idea is to first uh, store this data. Then, once the data is there, you create a knowledge base. And the new data that is coming through can be analyzed in the backdrop of the knowledge base that you've already created. So, therefore, you need to acquire data. You need to store data. You need to analyze new data in the backdrop of what you've already known in biology from the previous data. And then, of course, it is also important that the new data, again, gets assimilated into the previous data. And this is disseminated for a new user. So this is what we usually do in bioinformatics. And the primary data in bioinformatics is the sequence, right? And sequence could be either the DNA sequence or the RNA sequence or the protein sequence. And one might argue that protein structures is where the uh, bioinformatics began, which is absolutely true. But then again, at the base of protein structures, again, is also the sequence. So if you look into a more technical definition of bioinformatics, so bioinformatics uses computer programs for a variety of applications, including determining the gene and protein functions, establishing evolutionary relationships, and predicting the three-dimensional shapes of proteins, etc. So as I said, the primary data in bioinformatics is the sequence data. This is the genome sequence of uh, coronavirus 2, Wuhan H1 isolate. This also serves as a reference genome for coronavirus and its classification. And then, of course, you could have a sequence data in three flavors. One is the DNA sequence data or the genome data. Then you have the RNA data or the transcriptome data. And then you have the protein sequence. And that is basically a part of the proteome data. Right? And then, of course, you have more than just this because these are individual players. They combine together in specific pathways to give you a final functional state of a cell. So that is where we are heading. We are heading towards what is known as systems biology how individual components of omics, including genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, glycomics, and so on and so forth, combine together to give you a final functional state of a cell. So there was a time when sequencing was really difficult and prohibitively expensive. But now, of course, with the advent of next generation sequencing, and you can refer to my lectures on NGS data and NGS playlist, uh, it has become really, really cheap and, and it takes really less time. So the first human genome was sequenced in around 10 years and around $3.2 billion. Today you can sequence it at less than uh, $1,000 and less than half a day, right? So that is where we are and therefore the data generation has become a lot easier and data analysis is getting a little tough because uh, you need to now find the needle in the haystack, right? So now that we have multiple sequences, we could go for what is known as alignment. So, so alignment comes in two flavors. One is what is known as pairwise alignment, where you have two sequences. 
and you want to compare them for uh, looking at you know similarity and similarity is basically to infer the homology or how evolutionarily related the two sequences are you could also do what is known as multiple sequence alignment so you have multiple sequences and you want to see how uh, whether some of them are more related to each other as compared to the others that are there so you could do what is known as multiple sequence alignment and you could generate what is known as the phylogenetic tree of the evolutionary relatedness of the multiple sequences which two are the closest and how does it diverge from there is what you can see in multiple sequence alignment so we'll do multiple sequence alignment later today we restrict ourselves to pairwise sequence alignment and we do that using blast right or basic local alignment search tool so as i said you can do sequence alignments uh, in pairwise fashion or in multiple sequence alignment when you're doing pairwise alignment you're looking for uh, similarities between two sequences or dissimilarities between two sequences also looking for whether they're absolutely identical or not and then of course you're also looking for how evolutionarily related they are to each other right then you could also do what is known as multiple sequence alignment where there are multiple sequences and, and you're looking at how the multiple sequences are related to each other so this allows you to identify conserved regions within divergent sequences it also allows you to determine the evolutionary distance relationship and phylogeny between the sequences so now coming back to pairwise alignment so pairwise alignment can be done in two uh, different fashions one is where you have what is known as a global alignment where you have roughly similar length sequences and you are basically stretching them end to end to see what are the points where they differ from each other right. this is one type of alignment then you could also have what is known as local alignment in the local alignment it's still a pairwise alignment but your query sequence and your subject we are looking for the similarity may not be of the same length so now let's go back to our question so here is the question illustrate the similarity and differences between the gap dh gene in human and in chimpanzee and how do you do that you have to mention the genomic coordinates in the human and chimpanzee genome for the gap dh gene and then you also have to quantitate the extent of similarity in the gap dh gene in human versus the gap dh gene in chimpanzee so here is how we go about doing this we'll first retrieve the sequence of gap dh in uh, the human genome uh, using the uh, genome browser then we'll zoom into the orthologous locus or the similar locus in chimpanzee using the blast or basic local alignment search tool right and then of course we'll look at the alignment to see how similar how dissimilar the two sequences are with each other so let's go to ucc genome browser first and retrieve the gap dh gene sequence so here we are in UCC genome browser, genome.ucc.edu. So we want to get into the genome browser. So we click on genome browser here, and that takes us to the finally, the utility called genome browser, where you can see your genome in a graphical format. So we go to the genome Asia UCC site. So this now brings us to the genome browser gateway or the main genome browsing utility in UCC genome browser. The human genome is present by default. If you want to move into any other genome, you could click here and move into some other genome as well. So here we are. We are in the default human assembly that is GRCS38, the latest human genome assembly. If you want to access the previous assemblies, you could click here and it will take you to the previous assemblies as well. Uh, so what is the task at hand? We want to retrieve the sequence of GAP DH gene uh, in humans right and also we want to see what are the coordinates of the gap dh gene in human so what we do is we go to the search position and in search we could search by position we do not know the position so we could search by the gene name so we say gap dh and the moment you say gap dh it is going to prompt you all matches to gap dh in its uh, uh, in the drop down menu so you could select the one that matches your best description so we are looking at the gap dh gene sequence so we mark at gap dh and we say go so this takes us to the graphical display of the human genome and also zooms into the location of your gene in question that is gap dh so here you are you are on chromosome 12 from position 6534517 to 6538371 this is the coordinate of the uh, gap dh gene in humans you might note that for your reference and the length of the gene is 3855 base pairs right and then of course it gives you the display of how many different isoforms of rna are known to be coded from this region so one two three four five and six different rnas are known to be coded from this locus 
and you have a whole lot of annotation downstream. We will not talk of that today because we are our interest is more into looking into how to find an orthologous locus in chimpanzee, right? So we need to now retrieve the sequence so we can go to view option and in view option we can say DNA, right? And here again you can see this is the same coordinate as your gap DH chromosome twelve. Position 6534 to 5172 So this is your get DNA page where you can get the DNA sequence. And uh, the position is already marked here because you had selected for GAP DH. So it is already in the GAP DH coordinates. If you want extra sequence at the 5' prime and 3' prime end, you could mention how much of the extra sequence you want. It will retrieve that much extra sequence at the 5' prime and 3' prime end of the GAP DH gene sequence. Then there are some sequence formatting options. You could uh, pick up the sequence in all uppercase or lowercase. You could mask the sequence for repeats. We are not doing that for now. And you could also do the reverse complement. And in case you're not clear about uh, complement and reverse complement concept, you can go back to my playlist on introductory bioinformatics and refer to this lecture here, right? So this is basic bioinformatics sequence complement and reverse complement. Coming back to retrieving our sequence, we are not retrieving any extra sequence because we are majorly concerned only with gap DH gene sequence. Among the sequence formatting options, we only check for all uppercase. And then we say get DNA. So that is going to fetch us the DNA sequence for the gap DH gene. So if you see here on the top, this is in the pasta format. You have a D38 DNA. You have the genomic coordinates, chromosome 12, 6, 5, 3, 4, 5, and 7 to 6, 5, 3, 8. 371, the 5 prime pad is 0. You do not have any extra sequence retrieved. Likewise, 3 prime pad is 0. No extra sequence retrieved. The strand is plus. You've not done a reverse complementation. And the repeat masking is none because you did not choose to repeat mask. What these options mean, you can again go back to my first lecture and have a look. So part of the question is now solved. We know the location of gap gene in humans. So this is on chromosome 12 and the coordinates from start to end are 6, 5, 3, 4, 5, and 7 to 6, 5, 3, 8, 7, 1, right? And the length is 3, 8, 5, 5 basis. Right. So we'll use the sequence now to zoom into the chimpanzee genome to know where in chimpanzee genome do you have the gap DH gene and how similar or how different it is from the human gene sequence. So now we want to select the entire sequence. So we say control A and then we say copy, right? And now we come to the BLAST homepage, blast.ncbi.nlm.nih.gov slash blast.cgi, right? And if you see BLAST comes in several flavors, we are talking only today of BLAST-N or what is known as the nucleotide to nucleotide BLAST. You also have BLAST-X. So BLAST-X basically the query is going to be translated nucleotide and it is going to be the subject or where you're going to search for your search space is going to be a protein database. Likewise, T blasted, your query is going to be protein and you're going to search in the translated nucleotide database, right? And you could also do a protein to protein blast. So your query is a protein and your search also is in a protein database. And then if you go down, since we are interested only in chimpanzee, so you could mention, we could do a direct blast to genomes. We do not want a lot of redundant data. So what we do is we directly say that we want to search our query sequence in the chimpanzee genome. So we say chimpanzee, CH, and we're looking at the troglodytes chimpanzee genome. So we say chimpanzee, troglodytes, tax ID 9598. Here we are. So here you are. This is your typical chimpanzee genome. Pantroglodytes is the zoological name of the chimpanzee. So from there, we say chimpanzee, troglodytes, the taxonomic ID is 9598, and we say search. Uh, we are now going for a blast. We've already decided which organism we are going to use. So here you are. This is your database now. You're looking at the genome of PTR, pantroglodytes version 2, reference annotation at least 105, right? And the query sequence that we're giving is this. This is our sequence that we've taken from the human genome. If you see here, this is HG38 DNA, and the coordinates are the same for that, for the ones that we found at the human genome for GAP-DH. Your uh, job title uh, will be the same as your uh, FASTA sequence def line. So I'm sure you know what a FASTA sequence is and what is a def line and FASTA sequence. If you don't, again, go back to my lecture number one in introductory bioinformatics. 
And then, of course, what we're doing is we want to look for highly similar sequences, right? We are looking for highly similar sequences. So we do what is known as mega blast. Uh, some other lecture, I'll tell you how blast works in the background. Basically, it forms what is known as a seed. And this seed size defines whether you're doing a normal blast or a mega blast. So in this case, mega blast, the word size or the seed size or the k tuple size is 28. We'll keep all of the parameters default and we can say blast. This will take us now to the chimpanzee genome and find a region in the chimpanzee genome where our sequence matches. So this is the results page of BLAST and here you have the job title. Job title is the same as the def line of the sequence that you have input as your query. Uh, then it gives you uh, some tag, a unique tag for the submission. Then you have the program. The program you're using is BLAST N or the nucleotide BLAST. Then the database that you're looking at, this is mentioned here, genome, Clint PTR version 2, reference annotation release 105. If you want to see the details of your database, you could click here. This will give you some details of the database. Then the BLAST generates a query ID, which is shown here. Then you have the description. Description again has basically the def line of the input query sequence. Molecule type is DNA. The query length is 3855 base pairs. And below this, you have four tabs in which the results are displayed. You have description, you have graphic summary, you have alignments, and you have the taxonomy. So if you look at the descriptions, it gives you a tabulated format of where your matches have been found in chimpanzee genome. The entire list is there, and this list is basically sorted with respect to the uh, maximum score. So there are several statistics that are calculated in BLAST. Let's talk in brief about them without going into the details. So the first is identity. Identity is the number of nucleotides or amino acids that exactly match in the alignment. The next one is similarity. Similarity is the uh, same as identity in case of nucleotide alignment. But in case of protein alignment, similarity may refer to positions where the amino acids in the alignment are not exactly identical, but of the similar chemical nature. So number of amino acids matching exactly or of similar nature, that would be similarity. So E value or expect value, it is an important parameter. This basically shows that the match that you've got is not just by chance. So if you look at the definition of expect value, the expect value is a parameter that describes the number of hits one can expect to see by chance when searching a database of a particular size. So therefore, uh, it is important that uh, the alignment that you're looking at should have an E-value very close to zero or actually zero. So E-value essentially describes the random background noise and the lower the E-value, the better and more significant the alignment. And uh, in most cases, E-value should be 0, 0.0. Then you have a score. So this is basically based on the alignment and the number of uh, identities and the matches and mismatches and gaps that are introduced. So this is based on the sum of the rewards for matched nucleotides or amino acids and penalties for the mismatched and gaps that have been introduced. Then you have total score. This is the sum of uh, alignment scores of all segments of the same subject sequence. The last important statistical parameter is query coverage. And query coverage basically represents the percent of query length that is included in the aligned segments. So many a times you may have an e-value of 0, 0.0, but your sequence is only partially aligned or very low aligned, as would happen in this case when we look into the results. So therefore, in such cases, ideally you're looking at 100% query coverage or at least more than 90% query coverage to actually uh, decide that you've zoomed into the autologous locus in the chimpanzee genome. The more the query coverage value, the better it is. Ideally, it should be 100%, but 90% uh, or more is Fine. You could filter your results based on certain criteria here. So you could mention a percent identity. So you could mention a minimum and maximum that you want. So let's say you want anything between 90 to 100, right? Then E value you want, uh, let's say 0, 0.0 only is what you want. So let's say we say 0, 0.0 to 0, 0.0. And query coverage, we want at least 80% query coverage or more, right? So we say 80 to 100, right? So if you use this filter criteria, you could filter your results onto a smaller list. So when I click on filter here, we'll get the smaller list. Here you are. 
and you get only one head that is the main head so we cancel all filters to see the complete result again so we just click on the reset button here and there you are you have all the results here for you we are into now the uh, blast results and blast results are now given in four tabs if you see here you have this tab description you have graphic summary you have alignments and you have the taxonomy, right? So first let's look at the uh, description first. So description is where you have the tabular format of data and you can see that our sequence has matched at several places in the chimpanzee genome, but the 100% query coverage, which is the complete sequence is matched only at one position, that is uh, in this first link here. So we are looking for a locus in chimpanzee where our query sequence in human, which is the gap date gene matches. Uh, to a large extent. So that is where the query coverage becomes important. If you see here, this is query coverage, 100%, which means that the entire sequence got a match in the chimpanzee at this location. Then you have other regions where the match is 33%, which means part of our query sequence finds a match here. Likewise, you have 31%, 20%, 23%. And then, of course, if you go on, it goes down to at least to somewhere around 2% as well. So these are not the matches we're looking for. We are looking for where in the chimpanzee genome, there is a complete match because for all you know, these could be matches to low complexity regions, which may not be uh, of that much of significance to us. So you also have a column called percentage identity that gives you how many nucleotides are exactly same in human and chimpanzee. And again, here, what is important is to look at the uh, query coverage also. So you want the complete sequence to be matched and then you're looking at how many of these are similar. So here in this case, the best math that we get is uh, the first one where the percentage identity is 98.22%, which means 98, more than 98% of the nucleotides have one-to-one -one match between human and chimpanzee. Then of course, you have the accession number and accession link. You also have what is known as E-value. E-value is the probability of finding this uh, match by chance. And the closer this value is to zero, the better it is. Then the second math is interesting. If you see here, the percentage identity is still high, 94.51%. The E value also is as low as possible. That is 0.0%, which means this is not a match by chance. But if you look at the query coverage, it is only a partial match, 33%, which means more than two thirds of your sequence does not match here. So which could be basically a match to a low complexity region, or if the sequence has a repeat, it could be a match to that particular repeat sequence. So therefore, we can ignore this and we can move on to the first head. You have the graphical summary. Graphical summary represents the same data here. So you have the first match, which is the complete match. And then you have other matches which are partial matches. And you can see, the, see that analysis here. So we could go to the alignments by directly clicking here. Or if you want all the alignments, you could go here and you could have a look. Again here, if you see the first match will be the one that is the best match with the largest query coverage. And then, of course, if you scroll down further, you'll have the smaller matches. For example, this one here. You could click on this. It will directly take you to the alignment here. right? So let's now have a look at what is the alignment page like and what do the things mean here. right? So when you look at alignments, the first thing is that all alignments are to pantoglyditis because that is the only genome we've selected for finding a, a homolog. And then, of course, the uh, math is to chromosome 12. If you see, your alignment is divided into query and subject. So query is the sequence that you had given. And subject is the database into which you wanted to search for. So in this case, the subject is the chimpanzee genome. And you're looking for alignment in the chimpanzee genome, the region of the chimpanzee genome that matched to your query sequence. Chimpanzee genome is big. What it given was a 3855 base pair sequence. And you're looking at where the 3855 base pair sequence can be found in chimpanzee in block, right? So this is the main result of the BLAST. And at the top, you have the tabulation of the major quantitative parameters for the BLAST. So here you are, if you see, you have uh, the score is 6750 bits for binary digits. The expect value is 0, 0.0. And I have already told you that the expect value has to be the lowest and it has to be zero, uh, preferably. Then identities, how many of the nucleotides in the human genome are exactly identical to the nucleotides in the chimpanzee at the orthologous locus. And this gives you an identity of 3804 of 3873, which is 98% identity. Then how many gaps have been introduced? You have 21 gaps, 
And then, of course, the strand in chimpanzee also is plus. So you have the strand matching as plus plus. And now let's have a closer look at the alignment. So here you are. If you see, this is the alignment. This is nucleotide to nucleotide matching, G for G, C for C, and so on and so forth. And at this position here, in the human sequence, it is a guanin, and in the chimpanzee sequence, it is an adenin, right? So there has been a substitution. Likewise, you have a substitution here, if you see, you have an A here and you have a guanin here, right? Then you have another substitution here, a, a C or a T. So you can see uh, the substitutions are fairly frequent. And uh, that is why you have this number of 98% identities. The remaining 2% are not identical. Then let's look at the other type of changes. For example, here. So if you see here in this case, in the human genome sequence, this sequence piece is absent, right? So we call this as indel or insertion deletion instead of calling it individually an insertion or a deletion because we are not sure whether the deletion happened in the human sequence or the insertion happened in the chimpanzee sequence. So another important point that you need to remember is that when you're doing a DNA sequence alignment, similarity and identity are exactly the same thing. But when you're doing the protein sequence alignment, similarity at position refers to the chemical nature of the amino acid in question. You could have two different amino acids at that position, but they may be chemically similar. So you say they are still similar. So the identity can either be just the same as similarity or it could be lower than similarity because you could have two different amino acids at the same position which are not identical yet similar in their chemical nature. So majorly when you're looking at an alignment, you're looking at uh, substitutions as also into the insertion deletion. So if you go back to the summary of results at the top here, so you'll see the it is sorted with respect to the highest score, which is a function of the total score, the query coverage, and the e-value. Right? So if you go back to the descriptions, you'll see that the first head basically is your most relevant head because it is sorted on the basis of the maximum score, which is also a reflection of the total score, the query coverage, the e-value, and the percent identity of the alignment. So coming back to the question that was asked to us, one, mention the genomic coordinates in human and chimpanzee genomes. So we now know the human genomic coordinates and from the alignment file, we could also see the genomic coordinates in chimpanzee. And we also know the extent of similarity. It is more than 98%. So if you go back to the results one more time. So let's talk of the position of the match. So we are on chromosome 12 in chimpanzee. And then the coordinates of the match are from position 6, 7, 3, 5, 853 until position 6739722. Right? So this is uh, what is the question. So you know now the coordinates. Chromosome 12 in chimpanzee and X and Y coordinates I've already shown you through the match. Then of course you could also look at uh, the percentage identity to quantify how much is the percent identity. So you have uh, 98% identity, this is 3804 of 3873, and you have 21 gaps. The strand orientation is plus plus, which means in the chimpanzee genome also, the strand orientation is the same as in human, which is the plus strand orientation. So with that, we come to the end of this lecture. Uh, what I've told you is how to use BLAST to identify the orthologous locus in another genome. Uh, now, BLAST has many uh, flavors and many different uses. We'll keep talking of this in more details in coming lectures. Thank you very much.